in the middle of the rough Atlantic Ocean, with North America on one side and Europe on the other, is a group of nine islands known as the Azores. The Portuguese first reached the Azores in 1427. During the 16th and 17th centuries, the island's geographical position was pivotal for Atlantic navigation between Europe, the Americas and the Orient. The varying landscapes and terrain naturally lend themselves to outdoor adventure. This is a destination for nature lovers, with a climate that's temperate all year round. There are many natural reserves, parks and protected landscape areas, and forests that preserve the archipelago's ecosystems. The island of Fayal, like the others, is characterised by volcanoes, which have, through history, changed the islands and the lives of the people here. The western tip of the island exemplifies this volcanic activity. This whole landscape was created from the great eruption in 1957 and 58. Cabellinos here is like walking, or in my case, sitting on the moon. To get a broad overview of this area, you can visit the interpretation centre, hidden beneath all of this pyroclast and volcanic ash. There are more than 10 volcanic trails marked by these yellow and red markers. This is just one part of more than 27 kilometres of trail. It's incredible how, just a short distance away from that volcanic ash, it's green and lush. The geographic location of the Azores means you are at the mercy of the weather. I had been planning to climb the caldera over there, but the weather's got the better of me. But you just need to travel to a different part of the island, and you have sunshine and plenty of vegetation. Caldero de Fayal has a diameter of two kilometres and a depth of 400 metres. To walk around the rim, it usually takes two and a half hours. Orta is the only town on the island of Fayal. It overlooks the marina, and it's from here that boats leave daily for whale and dolphin tours. Now, historically, seafarers have painted a picture here in the harbour before they've set out on their long journey across the ocean to represent safe passage. I don't know what you think about uh, mine. I'm quite obviously no Picasso, but I think it will do the job. Orta has a cosmopolitan feel and worth a walk around the labyrinth of narrow streets. If you visit during one of the many festivals, you'll be introduced into the spirit of the Azorian people, the music and dance in their open-air gatherings, embracing the whole community with brass bands and traditional dancing. Volcanic Stone has a role to play in restaurants too. I was able to cook my fish at my table, just to my liking. Here you're presented with a selection of meat and fish with all the condiments to make your own meal. They say that almost all sailors passing through Horta come to the town's most famous bar. This has a history dating back to 1918. Cheers. The walls of the cafe tell the story with the memorabilia of sailors. Pennants, flags, cards, maps, nautical instruments and a map signifying its historical location. If you have a little more time on your hands, it's well worth the detour to go to Pico, just half an hour away, and home to the area's highest mountain. Well, the climb from the mountain hut to the summit of Pico behind me is a round journey of about seven hours. Probably not for the faint-hearted, it's quite difficult in places. It's windy, it's cold, but the views from here really are spectacular. If you don't fancy going all the way to the summit, you can do like I've done and set your tent up here, overlooking the miles and miles of ocean beyond with the fantastic peak of the volcano behind me. It really is spectacular here. Pico is renowned for its wine, and it's interesting to visit the vineyards growing among the lava stones, all within a UNESCO heritage site. For a different perspective, you can explore the underground lava tunnels. Here you'll be presented with a hard hat and torch for an hour's guided tour. I recommend hardy footwear and an extra layer of clothing. It's authentic, so watch your step. Afterwards, you may want to take a dip in the natural swimming pools, created by the lava-protected coastline. The harbour town of Velosh is the largest town on the western side of the island of San Jorge and welcomes most of the traffic from the other islands. Getting to San Jorge and between the islands is relatively easy, 
with regular ferries and private speedboats. There are also frequent flights between some of the islands. At the base of steep escarpments, slivers of land known as Fajas nestle by the sea. The island is oblong in shape, with a mountain range which forms the backbone. There are half-day and full-day organised tours in a variety of adventure sports. Qualified and experienced guides who speak several languages will take you coast steering, canyoning and abseiling along this rugged terrain, providing basic training before you set off, as well as the equipment, clothing and the transport. Well, I've come down the Santa Maria River over about half a dozen waterfalls and now it's time for the grand finale, a 50 metre descent down a waterfall into the Atlantic Ocean. I don't know if I want to laugh or cry. There are coastal boat trips which will provide you with a different view of the island. The rib hugs the coast and you get the sense of the density of these volcanic formations. San Miguel is the largest island in the Azores and the most highly populated. The historic centre of Ponte Delgada is the perfect way to take in the island's rich heritage and culture. You can visit the museums and the churches or you can just sit back and watch the world go by. Choose to explore by foot or a more leisurely way by carriage or the tourist train. There are plenty of narrow cobbled roads, statues, decorated tiles, clock towers, park squares and a fortress guarding the harbour. Important monuments of the Azores are the churches built since the time of the first settlers. In the centre is the church of San Sebastião, known locally as the Mother Church. It's convenient to the cruise terminal and to the marina, where there are plenty of restaurants and bars. You can travel around the island by car, take a jeep tour, or choose one of the ship's organised excursions. Fornas is one of the key tourist attractions on the island. This really is a spectacular geological feature. All around me is bubbling water and steaming vents. This is what makes the Azores such a unique place. Many people come here for lunch, which is cooked underground. A pot serves up to 25 people and is enjoyed by visitors and locals alike and served in restaurants nearby. Well, I have to say this is the first meal I've ever had that's been cooked geothermally. Cheers. In the village of Fornas is Terra Nostra Park, dating back to the 18th century. This botanical garden offers lakes, century-old trees, exotic flowers and a lake of thermal waters. This is one of the thermal pools here. It might not be quite the colour we're used to, but don't be put off. It's very warm and I'm told it's excellent for your health. One of the most iconic and picturesque aspects of the volcanoes here are these crater lakes. And what better way to explore them than by kayak? The Azores is renowned for dramatic scenery and the view over the lakes of Sete Cidades won't disappoint. In fact, the problem lies in choosing the best views over the crater. Lagoa de Fogo in the centre of the island is surrounded by endemic vegetation and white sandy beaches and deserves its classification as a nature reserve. So if you're looking for an adventure, the Azores really does have a huge amount to offer from the mighty volcano of Pico to the river canyoning of San Jorge. Or of course you could pick one from the seven other islands that exist in the archipelago.